This is the Renault Capture. At least we suspect that's what it is to those of us who buy, drive and review them in the UK. But actually, Renault would rather you inject a bit of Gallic flair. It is the Renault Capture. Oh la la. Name aside, what this car is, is a small SUV crossover that's about the same size as a Ford Fiesta or a Renault Clio. And it feels like one of a million different choices. For example, a Citroen C3 Aircross, a Ford Puma, the Jazz Star, the Kia Stonic, the Hyundai Bayon, the X30, the MGHS, the Nissan Duke, the Peugeot 2008, the Seat Arona, Skoda Kamek. Suzuki Ignis, Toyota Yaris Cross, Vauxhall Crossland, Vauxhall Mocha, and Volkswagen T-Cross. Is that all of the competition? Not much, really, is there? <laughs> Have I missed any out? Comment below, and remember to like this video and subscribe. So, does the Renault Capture, 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 no, I think my French accent needs a bit of work. Does the Renault Capture stand out in a crowded marketplace? Let's find out. Okay, so first things first, there's a very nearly premium feel in here with some decent trims and materials. In fact, you have to look very hard to find some hard scratchy plastic and some very attractive and comfortable seats that seem to have taken design inspiration from Volvo. Spot the difference. And considering Volvo makes some of the best seats in the business, we definitely mean this as a compliment. Higher spec models get a whopping 10 inch portrait style infotainment screen, but most like this iconic spec car from 2020 have to do with this smaller seven inch screen, which is still a reasonable size and it's actually more square than portrait. It's not the most intuitive system to use either, but you can at least largely bypass Renault's own software by using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Frustratingly, the volume and stereo controls are hidden in the touch screen. However, you do get steering column mounted controls here for the driver, which I prefer anyway. And there are some physical shortcut buttons along here, as well as these for the air conditioning and climate control settings. Automatic models have a little more storage space with a floating center console here instead of a chunky manual gear stick. And there's good sized door bins for all models. It's a shame then that the glove box is a little on the small side. Before we jump into the back where there are two sets of Isofix, it's worth noting that you also get a set of Isofix in the front. So if you'd like to have a little one right next to you, you can. Compared with the first generation Renault Capture, that is vehicles before 2019, you get more space back here, which is not a surprise because this model is longer, wider and taller. You also get a sliding rear bench so you can choose between boot space and more leg space and you get your own air vents and a 12 volt socket. In terms of boot space, you'll find 422 litres back here, which is about as good as any rival can offer and easily big enough for a couple of decent sized suitcases. Do be aware though that in hybrid models, that figure drops to a less impressive 379 litres. Mind you, even that smaller figure is about the same size as you'll get in a regular family car, such as a Ford Focus or a Volkswagen Golf, both of which are bigger. And we shall find out now why being a little more compact has its advantages on the road. Mainly, that's manoeuvrability. Although the Renault Capture is bigger than ever, it is still easy enough to whiz around tight city streets. And the three-cylinder turbocharged engine has enough oomph to satisfy your needs. It has 100 brake horsepower and the more recent models has 90 brake horsepower, which is a little more friendly on your purse. If you need a little more punch, there's a 1.3 litre four cylinder petrol with 140 brake horsepower or a pair of 1.6 litre hybrids, which come in both non-plug-in and plug-in forms. Unusually for a small SUV crossover, it delivers quite a grown up driving experience. It's based on the sophisticated 2019 Renault Clio and it has a stiffer suspension and body setup compared with its predecessor. And what that means is a more composed and comfortable ride. And it has much less body lean in the corners than its rivals, apart from the Ford Puma. 
It's even perfectly capable, economical and refined at motorway speeds, although the wind noise from around the door mirrors can prove a trifle irritating. So however you want to pronounce the name, the second generation Renault Capture is a surprisingly accomplished small SUV. It is economical, plusher inside than you might expect and very practical given its size. Yes, there are plenty of rivals out there, but if you pick one of these, you won't be disappointed.